Do you feel that there just has to be a better way, a better way to parent, a better way to live, a better way to learn, just overall a better way? So did I. I'm Mary, and at This Indulgent Life, I'm here to help you navigate parenting, education, and creating your extraordinary life. I wrote this post on um, giving birth in Hong Kong. <laughs> oh, being an American giving birth in Hong Kong, you just kind of keep going, but no, that's not how we do it. So that was pretty much my uh, mantra for a few days. Um, but there are a lot of good things that happen here in Hong Kong. But my story is up on the blog. You can go and see it. Lots of pictures and um, a lot of details, but I just want to give you a quick overview in case you don't have time to read the whole thing. Basically, I had to go in for induction because the little man was not coming out no matter what I tried. I mean, I tried walking up Buddha steps and around town and I tried everything, okay? It wasn't working. Uh, so I had to be induced. However, what I didn't realize when I went in to be induced was it wasn't just like in America, you say, oh, I'm going to be induced on this day, and then you get induced on that day. No. Being induced meant days in the hospital. In fact, it could have been up to a week in the hospital, but I was quite pushy. Um, it included the gel. It included lots of non-stress tests. Um, I walked up and down, up and down, or over and over. I wanted that baby out. It wasn't working. It included... <laughs> A lot of uh, aggravating moments of no communication, forcing communication, and even the Foley balloon. Um, you can read all about it again on the blog. But it was, let's see, I went on a Wednesday. Saturday, I finally had the Pitocin and the water breaking. Um, that's the way they do it here. I'll automatically break your water and put you on the Pitocin. And they want you to get up to uh, three to five, what is it, contraction every three to five minutes, I think it is, or two to four minutes, I can't remember exactly, within 30 minutes. <laughs> they want you to be in active labor immediately. And I was. And I had pure back pain. And it was. <coughs> it was awful. It was so bad. My husband would try to, like, need my back to the point where I kind of had a bruise on my spine. Um, I couldn't use the ball because I've got a tummy and the fetal monitor kept moving and they didn't like that. Couldn't walk around because again the fetal monitor would move and they didn't like that. The room was so tiny. Uh, to go to the bathroom I had to sit on a chair kind of like this and with arms though I had an ar had armrest and sit on a bedpan because you're not allowed to go to the bathroom. Even though going and sitting on the toilet has been known to help with dilation and moving down and all that stuff. But nope, could not go to the bathroom. It was so very, very bad. But I fought the epidural. I fought and I fought and I fought and I fought, especially because there was this woman, the anesthesiologist that I met before getting induced, who basically told me I would have to have an epidural because I'm fat, I'm white. And what was the other thing? I'm fat, I'm white, and I'm a first time mom. And so she said I basically have to have an, an epidural. And in the end, I did, but simply because I knew I wasn't progressing. I spent four hours, no progress. Four hours of active labor, zero progress. In fact, I had eight hours with, I think, one or two of those hours on the epidural was zero progress. That's quite scary because if I had not gotten to a three within 12 hours, I would have had an emergency C-section because that's the rule here. Um, they break your waters and they give you and they give you the pitocin and they give you 12 hours to get to a three. And if you're not at a three, you go for emergency C-section. And if you don't have the baby within 24 hours after water breaking, you go in for emergency C-section. 
there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Um, so I ended up getting the epidural. I had them turn down the Pitocin because when I finally agreed to the epidural, I didn't even ask for it. They asked me to get it, um, which is unheard of in Hong Kong. If you're a normal birth, you go into labor by yourself, that kind of stuff, they usually um, don't advocate for an epidural in a public hospital. Private, yes, public, no. Um, but they, they begged me quite often until I finally gave in. Because I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> it was so hard. And I wanted to progress, I didn't want a C-section. And I, I remembered from my research that for a very small percentage of women, an epidural will actually help instead of hinder. For most women, an epidural could actually slow your labor down. But for a small percentage of women, they actually kind of need it in order to prevent a C-section. And that was me. Um, so I got the epidural, and that was so nice. I finally slept. I hadn't really slept in days. And I still had some pain. I had kind of like be on my side. And after a few hours, I would start to have one side... Uh, not feel anything and one side start to have back labor again, so I'd have to switch and Then it was only ever at 60% the epidural was never a full hundred percent. It was always at 60. It was a drip and Then when I finally did progress um, to four and then I I kept progressing they wanted me to do a centimeter an hour After that and I did I kept it up there was some scares in there. There was heart rates dropping. There was me getting chills and and slight feverish and whatnot. Um, but we made it through all of that. We were able to push through. And then I finally got to right before I would have to start pushing. But I couldn't feel the need to push. And so they asked me to stop the epidural altogether or at the very least go to half dose. The problem was even at the 60%, I was still feeling the back pain. Um, I guess because I have sciatica or he had moved, I'm not really sure exactly why, but I had major back pain. Um, it literally felt like my spine was being split open. So I could not, as much as I wanted to, I couldn't just stop the epidural. I knew I wouldn't be able to make it. Um, and so we cut down on half and they basically told me to push when I needed to push and they told me even though I know I remember now we were told let your body do its thing don't force the pushing all that stuff she just told me if I wanted the back pain to go away I had to push let me tell you what he will do anything to get rid of that pain so I pushed. I even popped a blood vessel in my eye that I still deal with to this day. I did tear a little bit, but not much. Um, yeah, <laughs> you will get rid of that pain. You'll do what you gotta do. So I did, I pushed, he came out. Unfortunately, there was meconium in the fluid. And so they had to have the pediatrician on uh, standby to make sure he was okay. He was lucky, he started crying on his own after a little bit. It was a little scary at first. Um, they did have to kind of clean him up to make sure he was okay. I was completely out of it. I I was so out of it. I don't even kind of really remember most of that time. I just remember being like, whoa. Um, I was like on a high. And I did luckily get my one hour uh, of skin to skin afterwards. It was probably the calmest hour of the whole entire hospital experience, just the three of us. And it was really, really odd. So after that hour, they took him to the NICU. You can hear him below. Um, and I got taken to the post labor ward because there's a pre labor ward. And then there's the labor ward where you change into purple clothes. Pre-labor, you're in pink clothes. Post-labor, you're in purple clothes. And then um, post-labor, you're back in pink clothes. And they're all different sections of the hospital. And you're in these tiny little cubicles with curtains sharing a bigger room with lots of people. Um, 
but they had to take the baby to the NICU and I came and they they wheeled me on my on the bed to the post ward post labor ward and then they showed me how to hand express they had these little syringes I had to use um, and I had to like while I'm out of it I had to learn how to hand express and fill this little syringe and then I took a nap and oh such a nice nap. I felt so revived after that nap. Unfortunately, um, there's nobody there to tell you when you need to feed your baby who's in the NICU, right? There's no one to tell you until the baby's already really, really hungry that they need you to hand express. So unfortunately, that was a bit of a setback, but luckily not a setback in my breastfeeding journey, just a little difficult with the nurse yelling at me. They like to yell at you. Um, but overall, it it was exhausting. It was frustrating. I ended up leaving after a day uh, in post-labor. Luckily, he came back to me 12 hours later. I was able to go and feed him, you know, that kind of stuff. And we were all okay. But, oh man, if you have to have a baby in the public hospital system of Hong Kong, bring a ton of snacks, bring a portable charger or two, uh, and headphones, an eye mask, and your own pillow, definitely bring your own pillow, and then get outside help, like a lactation consultant, a midwife, to come and visit your home. I use Annerly to come and visit your home so you can leave the hospital. You will not get sleep in the hospital, so you might as well, if you have like a helper and a husband at home that can help you take care of the baby and whatnot, go home. That's my biggest advice. They tried to get me to stay. Even Annerly tried to get me to stay because they couldn't come see me the next day. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, I would be better off at home. A lot less stress at home. So that's my advice. Not everybody agrees, but it is what it is. <laughs> so if you have more questions about my, my experience, I tried to get this short. You can ask them down below. Um, and I'll try to make you another video. If you want to be inspired, if you want to be a more mindful parent, if you want to know what it takes to step forward into creating your extraordinary life, then subscribe now because you will get weekly tips and inspiration on how to create your ideal life. Thanks so much for watching.